It is 8.29, so the 8.30 podcast begins. <laughs> it's not really a scheduled thing like that. But anyway, this is Mike's Mastermind.com, sort of a podcast and pseudo-philosophy uh, prospective uh, program on what's going on in Mike's mind. <clears throat> the mastermind. Excuse me for... <clears throat> Mike's Mastermind.com, and I'm Mike Ratner, uh, the host, and we are still in June 2023, the 20th of June, and still 8.29, believe it or not. In the morning, I'm about to go and cut the grass. It's been a while for a check-in, so this is really quick. What's going on? Ellen's in her second week of summer school, the 13-year-old who's going to be entering high school next year, taking gym uh, through uh, the summers, at least through July 20th, so that she doesn't have to take it in the fall. Take care of those requirements early. And I've been reconnecting with old friend Dawn R., who you'll hear on be on my show.com as we talk about and reconnect on our, you could say, radio, college radio broadcast. Uh, kind of like a shared history. We were doing that at the same time, but in different states, me being in Chicago, Illinois, and her in San Luis Obispo, California. But she was a subscriber to my low noise radio program at Report newsletter. I'm just laughing there because it's kind of interesting that, you know, what I was 22, 23 when I started publishing a newsletter on how to do radio programming. I really hadn't had that much experience doing it, but really loved the role and the experience, which is how she connected into it, because we look back at it as uh, a heyday, sort of one of, I think we both agree it's a favorite peak period of time. And for me, for many reasons, not just that era of the 80s and being in college and working for the coolest radio station in Chicago, with, as the program director, with a great team, and um, I could say Wizard staff, which which was the name of our station, the Wizard. Uh, but for Dawn and her experiences and the connections she's maintained, we we liken a community, and so looking at reformulating our lives and where we're at right now, relaunching <coughs> that, which for her, you know, um, having completed one career and having moved back to San Luis Obispo would be sort of like, well, what's next? And launching a podcast channel could really be amazing. And so check out beinmyshow.com for that particular interview. I think we're just calling it the Dawn Show. <laughs> and uh, we uh, will continue it. We did an hour and a half so far. We'll probably have another uh, episode or two of just us rambling and banting back and forth, and then we'll probably be expanding it into our different ideas, which was one reason why I wanted to do this quick check-in recording so we catch up there, which has been fascinating, you know, being June. And these things in development, I've been looking for studio space, a place I could expand out to launching a podcast channel recording studio, either Chicago, here or there, uh, Milwaukee. So the reason I picked up the mic other than to do the quick check-in was because of, you know, I'm in need of developing podcast shows. And because you have so many ideas, and up to now, at least from my location, I'm a one-man show, I will be checking in with some people online around the world who I've put the word out to to help edit and produce a podcast. We'll see who shows up. They're expecting to be paid, of course, but so, you know, this is an organic startup at the moment. And as we're flying by the seat of our pants, podcastchannel.com has a lot of potential, like beinmyshow.com and the 80spodcast.com and um, freakpodcast.com, which was what it was a bit frustrating. I thought I'd pick up the phone because I've been writing out some sketches for Freak Podcast and only kind of realized this morning that if you're going to make a Freak Podcast, the hosting and the whole dynamic should be... I was taking the view from a traditional standpoint you know, come in and like, hey, thanks for listening to the Freak Podcast, and our next freak is, no, 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 can't be quite like that, or maybe one segment of some episode somewhere. In the universe of unlimited potential and a wild imagination, what's needed is really sort of an out-of-the-box, sort of like you'd listen to this podcast and be going like, Freak Podcast, you'd tell your friends about it because it's that wild, that good. So what is it? What is it about? Now, I conceptualized it, and I have a page up on the podcast channel.com, freakpodcast.com, great domain, and earlier this year, I forgot to renew it, and I actually lost it for a while, but nobody re-registered it, and I got it back, so I'd be more careful about the few hundred domains I own to 
manage them better or let them go. But Freak Podcast is a keeper, freakpodcast.com. So what's it supposed to be about? Well, initially it was just sort of like the idea of just being very unusual and weird, not necessarily talking about circus oddities, like the three-eyed, you know, guru, whatever. So the idea here, though, is just make a really wild show. So I was just thinking, wow, I, I got to come out of the box on this one. Like, real out of the box, you're going to make it like that. So anyway, I'm putting it out there to you. If you've got an idea or inspiration, a great story, something that's really freaky, let me know. Or a subject that, that falls out of the uh, normal bent. And uh, we uh, would consider it. Freakpodcast.com. And then the other idea I had was, like, I'm really into what the German word Gedanken, which translates to thought experiments, that that would be a great podcast, Gedankens. And each episode would be some sort of thought experiment that people could meditate or contemplate or play into. So what would that be like? Well, if you go to earlier episodes of Mike's Mastermind.com, you'll find some assorted, uh, and actually don't have any exactly on it, but a good number of them have Gedankens within it. So what would a podcast just focusing on Gendankins, which translates to thought experiments, be about? Well, so you're thinking about some concept or idea, and a lot of my Mike's Mastermind.com stuff is more philosophical-minded, but has a lot to do with psyche and the projected persona, which I ask, is that not some modality of mass trance, which what I'm saying is the hypnosis of society? So I was considering this and all these ideas before doing the recording. I'm just stepping into the other room here because this is where my cup of coffee is. Could you tell the uh, ambience? There, that's a clue. What? How'd that happen? It's because I'm holding a cup of coffee and trying to turn light switches on with the same hand because the other hand is holding the phone that I'm talking into. Good morning. Depending where you are in the world, it's probably, let's see the time now. Well, it's 8.36, so this boy's been talking for seven minutes about. <laughs> Am I getting anywhere? Well, look, so my thought experiment concept is sort of situational in a lot of ways. Because my goal, at least in Mike's Mastermind, is to conceptualize. And again, this is a little bit of an offbeat changeover because we're talking about more the podcast channel and reconnecting and ideas. Is to put yourself in, in the thought experiment, so it's using your imagination, but to make the conditions as realistic, you know, as sensory available as possible. So you're really having an enriched, quote unquote, real experiment. Now, real to real, in this case, is moving forward in this thought experiment. So one, you it's sort of like you materialize, you know, beam me up, Scotty, and you're you're sort of or beam down. <laughs> and you're in this new world that you're have imagined. And again, very situational doesn't have to be anything different, let's say, that if it's in your room, but now either you're cleaning up the space, and that could mean relationship-wise, and talking to someone, and maybe someone that you haven't talked to in a long time. So it wouldn't be a really quick, polite, loving check-in, but there may be something that needs to be addressed or worked out or at least resolved or a handshake on that it has been um, complete and now enabling to move on. So in one sense, when, in, in this recent case, with uh, with Darwin R, to reconnect is really kind of a cool thing because it's like to me it was one of the people in your mind you kind of I look at what I call crossroads more of initial term and it's not spiritual religious in any way other than the concept of the thought experiment that 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 interaction had an opportunity which you have to go to be on my show dot com to find out more but this is the teaser that there was something that could have happened in the past in this case potentially the potential wild you know, wild card draw, you know, Russian roulette here, that this would have been an opportunity to get a radio station back in the early 90s. So what? Get a radio station? What would that have been like? Well, that's a crossroad. That would have been a whole different world or different dimension. So the thought experiment, I'm sure, when people wonder in their imagination, they go into a fantasy and they think, well, what would that have been like? What? And you have a sense of it. So for the thought experiment, and for you, and this would be something that would be considered for a future podcast called Gendankins, I'm not saying I will, but I have a lot of ideas and domains that, that need addressing. And again, the challenge of a one-man show is my thought Gendankin. And so my uh, experiment will be to create some sort of routine and a schedule 
would be a production schedule and just have a bit of discipline to sort of say, okay, well, this is a theme this month or this week, and this is the shows we're going to work on, and these are the days we've agreed to record. And depending on who I have as an editor or someone to help me produce, we will be very productive in producing a lot of podcasts. And these would be great programs, like Freak Podcasts, which needs to sort of come together in some certain way that people go, man, that is a freaky show. Check out freakpodcast.com. Back to beinmyshow.com, mikesmastermind.com, socialissues.com, lovingconversations.com. Great domains. The names pretty much say it all, at least create some intrigue. And the idea here in, in my thought experiment is sort of have it come together. So we actually do create sort of a hierarchy or a ladder up, an actual crossroad, so where we can now maneuver and go in that new direction or one that we both sort of want but didn't really quite know how to coalesce and make it happen. And that relates to perhaps that other person, whether it be a, a Don or a Janice or somebody that you had in mind that you thought like, oh, it would be great to tune it. Because that crossroad was something that had we crossed, you know, the divide, uh, would have led to the promised land of something that could occur, uh, occur or evolve and manifest. And that opportunity might be right here and now in this very moment. And that's what makes it very exciting because we are at that crossroad right now. And for you, perhaps, whatever your thought experiment or good thinking is sort of perhaps an exploration of expectations, like, well, what is involved with this? What am I going to have to become, do, or have, or learn, uh, connect to? What resources do I need in place? This is part of a process related back to the successclub.org, where we look at goals, and not just goal setting, which is very important to initiate a process to where you're clear about your goals, and these are objectives, milestones, accomplishments that are important. And again, it could just be simply a clearing away, a resolution, a healing, something that sets a new precipice so that you can cross that road. And for other people, it's really just a matter of an experience or evolving, and elevating something that, um, in another talk called the Welt Slosh, German word, kind of put those two together and making use of it, world slosh, meaning world dwelling or building. And it's the sense that in this thought experiment that as we begin to perceive, and the sensory acuity is really important here, and when you talk about sensory, it's using your senses, right? So it starts, if you can have a formula for this, and a sort of a process to sort of make it really grounded and attuned to the experience of the experiment, you want to start with what you're feeling first, because your gut intuitive inner sense will tell you quite a bit if it's right or wrong or how to proceed, at least initially. Because when you're feeling, you're tuning into what sort of you're, you're attuned to. In this way, it might be something that you're hearing and what you're listening to. You can hear something, but are you listening to it? And then what are you saying to yourself about it? It's going to evolve into a way that you're thinking, and that perception is what you're seeing. A lot of other people have it sort of in reverse. It's a little bit messed up or disoriented because a disattraction would be sort of like, well, I'm imagining something or seeing it, but it's, it's not really the reality of, of what's in the bigger picture or the vision, if you have a vision, because maybe you're left <laughs> in some kind of bad gandank and so a bad thought experiment or an experience where you're sort of like you're left sort of like, oh, well, that didn't work out because either one, it could be the perception of what, you know, needs caution and concern to avoid danger or sort of, you know, sort of what's going to be diversive, right? Creating more dichotomy. You want to sort of detangle, right? You sort of want to dissipate any tension, right? So you don't get that negative reaction, someone just blowing out in anger because you said that particular word, it's a touch point, you know, they instantly go into a reaction. <laughs> and you knew better, but you went there. So it's like, okay. So that part in this dimension, you know, the thought condensing could be quite negative. So we might want to sort of have that sensory input again to where we're checking in. What are we feeling? What are we sensing? This is the vestibular sense. The vestibular sense is sort of more the gut. But it's a sense of feeling. Like we should check in first. Like, what am I feeling before I engage? Because the intuition is going to tell you something if you're t attuned to it. And you can check in with it. Hey, this is what I'm sensing. Is this what's going on? Are you sensing that too? What's it about? Where do we want to go? So this is the dimension of a world slush, the world that we're dwelling in. 
Now, it has the reality of a built situation or a structure that's sort of been in place or some sort of an agreement in the construction of 